much. Let's talk more about this now with trial attorney Mercedes Colwyn. Uh, Mercedes, always good to have you. As Dre just pointed out, we're officially looking at the starting line of six to eight weeks of trial here. How important are opening statements in an unprecedented case like this? Great question, Marking. Always wonderful to start my day with you. It's exactly right. When you talk about opening statements, it is your first opportunity to connect with a jury. Any trial attorney will tell you that is vital because you need to make sure that that jury comes right into your narrative, your theory in protecting your client in the prosecution and prosecuting the case. So the prosecutor and the defense are going to walk through, certainly the prosecutor will walk through what evidence they have, sort of just a foreshadowing of what's to come. What are does some documents that they have? What are the business records at issue? Who are the witnesses that will testify? What the evidence may show? Now, the defense is going to be very different because they have to be very fluid about which way they want to turn. They can't make certain representations and they can't make certain guarantees because they're not certain if they're going to even call former President Donald Trump to the stand, even though he's been making pronouncements out there saying that he will take the stand, that's something that it's going to be game time decision. Mm -hmm. So no guarantees by the defense, certainly lots of, of foreshadowing by the prosecution. Yeah, we'll wait to see what happens there, but today certainly lays a foundation for the trial ahead. The other thing I was looking at, Mercedes, is um, the different occupations of some of these jurors uh, who are taking part in this trial. Some of the things they've said, two of them are attorneys. Do you see that as a problem in terms of influence they could have on other jurors? And, and which side would that benefit more, you think? Well, I love having juror, I love having lawyers and juries because they certainly are trained to be very analytical in the way they look at matters, they, the way they analyze facts. It could be exactly true to say they might be pretty influential in the jury pool, but it's in the jury amongst the jury. But for me as a trial attorney, I love having lawyers be in it. And frankly, so many lawyers are not allowed to sit as jurors. I personally have wanted to be a jury. I, a juror for many years, never have been picked. So it's something that most trial attorneys would like to see happen. Okay. I just wanted to uh, take your temperature on that. What are the stakes for the former president, uh, you know, in what the jury ultimately decides in the end? Well, there are 40, 34 counts. That's very significant. Mm -hmm. Now, each count... If you're just looking at falsifying business records, those are misdemeanors. If you do it co consecutively, it could be 34 years. Not going to happen. This is the first time if he is convicted of just the business records. It's likely somewhere in a couple of years if they do if they bundle them. If it's shown by the prosecution that's been election interference, which is the secondary theme that you you are hearing, and certainly we'll have to see what the prosecution will show. In that case. If they're able to demonstrate to the jury that former President Trump was actually trying to influence his campaign, and now it is about election interference, it's a felony. So it really depends on what evidence is going to show. It could, could come in as a misdemeanor. Generally, misdemeanors are less than a year. He could even get probation. Or if they can establish that this is a felony, it could be considerably longer. I also wanted to go back just a couple of days. On Friday afternoon, we had that horrifying scene outside the courthouse, that man lighting himself on fire. Uh, he ultimately died. But this video playing out everywhere, it's hard to watch. But Mercedes, this coupled with the fact that you're talking about a former president on trial here, I mean, how much is this costing the city of New York? It could be pretty significant. I mean, just ball parking it. Let's take a look at how much law enforcement is going to be present, the overtime, the extra security, the mm -hmm. security for the jurors. I mean, there are already two jurors who were elect were impaneled who no longer serve. One in particular who was a nurse who said that she couldn't serve, she couldn't be fair and impartial. She was feeling that too much information was out there in the press. So you can just imagine with that extra presence that's needed to protect these jurors, it could be pretty costly. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I can't even imagine uh, what that price tag is going to be in the very end. Mercedes Colwin, always good to have you. Thank you so much. I'll be talking to you again soon. Sounds great. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.